harder you work for something and the anticipation of finding something. I think that's what all life is about. It's the anticipation of whatever your endeavor is that makes it so good. This is the story of Bill McGee and his world of gem mining in the mountains of Southern California. My name is Michael McGee and I'm the youngest son of Bill McGee's second family. I was born in San Diego County but grew up in Switzerland. As a youth, I attended film school in Los Angeles and spent a lot of time shooting in the mines of my dad. Today, 20 years later, I have compiled that timeless footage to portray a man and his quest to liberate the jewels of nature hidden in this rugged environment. I tried to fathom the fascination driven by the sparkle of these very special stones. Everyone seems to be most happy in the area they grew up. So in my case, I grew up here in these beautiful mountains. And in my opinion, they're gorgeous. And my one thought was to come back and acquire a piece of land up here and build me a home and retire up here. Because this is the area I love so much. To me, uh, that's the most exciting thing a person can do. Uh, with other things, you know what I mean? There's a fulfillment of finding these uh, minerals and gems and that they've been here for millions of years and they're under the ground and nobody has found the ones that I have found, is for sure. And there's still a wealth of things to find and it's probably as big a challenge as a person could have to go out and find a ledge, a pegmatite and dig into it and find some of these things that have been laying there for millions of years and no one's ever seen them before. As time goes on, things that we find are becoming less and less and less because all the easy things have been found. So now you have to go into these ledges that nobody ever prospected in or tunneled in with the anticipation that there's enough uh, types of minerals there to form the crystals you're looking for. There's no gem mine uh, that's ever easy to get to. They're always on the roughest side of the mountain or on the highest point or in the deepest part of the canyon. And of course that means a mile, maybe a half a mile or whatever to get down to that mine and transport your machinery to the mine because one has to have heavy equipment to work these mines. You have to have a big compressor and jackhammers and water, all the different things it takes to make a mining operation. Pegmatites are probably the most fascinating mining in the world. There's, there's only about 2% of all the land in the world, in the whole world, that produces gems, 2%. And fortunately, here in San Diego County, it's one of the areas that have gems. And if they were easy to find, why, they wouldn't be worth anything. People would want pieces of granite. It's a nice way to, to be retired, you know? and uh, be able to do these things and still have enough uh, good health that you can still get out and climb around the hills and, and still drive a tractor and run a backhoe and, and uh, still have time to do other things too, you know. It's all part of living. You follow the, the most crystallized area of the dike, and sometimes there's absolutely no indication 
of any crystallization. So you have to, to pursue that vein or that ledge of rock. And so you drill, shoot, and muck. safety fuse. We like this because uh, you get a spontaneous shot and for us we've had the, the best luck. With this particular method to date I haven't had a failure. Once in a while you get a bad cap and uh, you wait a couple hours to make sure you don't have any hang fires in your safety fuse and then you go down and, and uh, put a new cap in and a new piece of fuse and then you're in business. source of labor we have for this type of work is are these Mexican boys that come in out of Mexico. They're great to work with. You teach them and they're happy and uh, they're just congenial people to work with. And they become like part of your family because of the constant association, closeness of working in a tunnel together and each one knows their job. You're always watching for some type of crystal, something with a little face on it, something with that'll let you know that in that particular area where you are working, that there is a chance to find a gem. Maybe a quartz will have just a little tiny face on it, but this tells you something. This says, look, in a little further, I'm gonna be more complete. And then if you find a little lithia or a little of this pink clay or a little of this red clay, these are all signs to tell you that you may be or may not be approaching a gem pot. 